Camera movement is essential to the fluidity of your 2D game. In this video, we'll cover the process of setting up a camera in your 2D game. First, we'll download and install Cinemachine. Then, we'll set up Cinemachine to follow our player throughout the scene. Finally, we'll write a script to zoom our camera in and out. This video is part of a much larger series where I cover everything you need to know for building your own 2D side view game. The project is available for free through my GitHub account and you can access that by clicking the link in the description below. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel and also check out my Patreon account if you want to donate that way. Also be sure to follow us on our social media accounts to get updates on the latest videos. Alright, so in Unity, when I play my game, you can see that the player moves around no problem, but the camera stays static. So what I like to do is make the camera follow the player around the scene. We can do that very easily with the Cinemachine package, and to download that package, we'll need to open the package manager. We can do that by navigating to the window tab and selecting package manager. Now let's make sure that we're searching among all the packages, and let's search for Cinemachine and click install. Now there are two core components of Cinemachine that we'll be using. Uh, the first is a Cinemachine brain. The brain will add to the main camera game object in our scene. The second object we'll be using is the virtual camera. Now you should only really have one Cinemachine brain in your scene at a time, assuming that you only want one active camera. But you can assign the Cinemachine brain to use whichever virtual camera you want, even though we only have one virtual camera in our scene. For us, since we only have one virtual camera, we don't have to worry about transitions or anything like that, but the Cinemachine brain can easily allows you to make transition from virtual camera to virtual camera. First, let's add our virtual camera, and we can do that by creating a new game object and adding a virtual camera component. We could also navigate to the Cinemachine dropdown in the toolbar and create a virtual camera that way, but I'll just show you how to make it from scratch. Next, let's add a Cinemachine brain to our camera game object. Uh, we can do that by navigating to the inspector panel. With our main camera game object selected, click the add component button and search for Cinemachine brain. As you can see, the screen changes to the current virtual camera view, uh, but don't worry, we'll fix that in a second. And let's nest the camera into the virtual camera. Uh, I'll do that purely for organization. That won't actually affect anything about the camera. Let's also drag in our player's game object to the follow and look at Dropbox on the virtual camera before we forget. So now let's fix the actual camera view and we can do that by decreasing the Z position from zero to negative 10, backing the virtual camera up. I'll quickly just fill in the remainder of the tiles in our tile map so that we have enough to fill the screen. Now that our camera angle is fixed, let's set up our camera to follow the player throughout the scene. To do that, let's select the virtual camera and in the aim selection, let's change the drop down from to nothing to transposer. We can pan the camera up a little bit by increasing the Y follow offset. When we run our game, our camera moves along with our player, but we can also change how closely our camera reacts to the player movement by modifying the dampening. With a high dampening, the camera will allow our player to move further and further before it actually begins changing its own camera location. That's a super handy tool, but we don't really need it for now, so I'll keep the dampening to one. So our camera does follow our player around and that's all well and good, but I'd like to add a zoom in and out capability so that our player can hit a specific control and the camera will zoom out to show a larger view. Now intuitively, you might think that we can do that by changing the position of the camera on the Z axis, but there's a little bit of a safer way to do that. Let's create a new script by right clicking in the project panel, navigating into create and selecting C sharp script. Let's rename that script to zoom and then double click it to open Open it in Visual Studio. First, let's create a serialized variable for the key we'd like to use to trigger our zoom function. We'll need a variable for our virtual camera along with three floats. So the way we'll be zooming in and out is by changing the virtual camera's orthographic lens size. The lower the lens size, the more zoomed in we'll be, and the higher the lens size, the more zoomed out we will be. 
So this first float will track the minimum lens size that we want, and the second float will track the maximum lens size we want. The last float we'll use to help animate the transition from zoomed in to zoomed out. In the start function, we can set the minimum lens size to the current lens size of the virtual camera. And let's write the function to animate the transition. To do that, we can create a coroutine. Coroutines are functions that allow us to create subroutines running code on its own thread. I'll create a local iEnumerator function called lerp, taking in two floats as parameters. One float I'll be using as the starting lens size and the other I'll use as the ending lens size. LERP stands for Linearly Interpolate, which is a fancy way of saying animate the transition from point A to point B given the specific amount of time. Don't worry though, I'll keep things pretty simple here. I'll reset the T value at the beginning of this function and then open a while loop. Let's run the loop while our current orthographic lens size isn't equal to the ending lens size. And then we'll set the current lens size to the return of the mathf lerp function using the start, end, and t variables as parameters. Let's increase the t by adding delta time to it. And then let's yield return null inside the end of the loop and again at the end of the function. Then in the update function, let's create an if statement for when the toggle key is pressed. And then again, when the toggle key is released. Both if statements should start by stopping any other coroutines currently running, just in case the user releases the toggle key before they are fully zoomed out. When the toggle key is pressed, we'll start our lerp coroutine using the current lens size as the start parameter and the maximum as the end parameter. Then when the toggle key is released, we'll do the same as above, but we'll use the minimum variable as the ending parameter. Next in Unity, let's add the script to our virtual camera and drag in the virtual camera into our Dropbox. I'll set the toggle key to Z, and I'm not really sure if the minimum and maximum values will work, so I'll just have to test those and see what looks right. And it looks like the lens size don't really work. Uh, I think that has to do with the minimum and maximum values that we set. So let's reopen Visual Studio and I'll just set the maximum lens size to double of what the minimum is. Now back in Unity, let's play this game and see how it looks. We can see that the camera follows our player around the scene and the zooming in and out function does in fact work. What's up everyone? Thanks for watching. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to follow us on social media to get the latest news updates.